Before we start this video, let's address one thing. If you ever want to get into actual perspective work, you should pick up a 3D program like Blender, or you can use After Effects to achieve a similar result. For After Effects, there's a tutorial available which we'll link down below in the description, but for Blender, that'll have to be your own research. We don't feel confident enough to cover anything outside of what we know, so we'll only cover Flash and some extended image editing programs such as GIMP or Paint.net. So what are perspectives? Well, it's just animating or drawing things at a different angle. It's not really that common of a question in traditional animation due to you drawing everything yourself and not being restricted to a two-dimensional plane. Nor is it asked in 3D animations, well, because it's 3D. It's already in perspective. So why do people ask, how do I do perspectives in sprite animation? Well, that's because the sprites used are inherently designed for 2D games. The sprites and their assets are done at a 2D angle, since those games were designed to be 2D. As such, it's not as straightforward as doing it traditionally, where you make your own drawings, or 3D where it's already in perspective. Some games try to simulate 3D, such as with the Sonic Advance trilogy, via its special stages. It opened up the way for sprite animators to utilize 3D in their animations in clever ways. Mark Haynes was one such animator who did this in a series Super Mario Bros. Z. So how do you do it? And what are the different types? Because background assets are usually designed in 2D, but you still want the pixel aesthetic, or using the sprite backgrounds in some way instead of using fully rendered 3D models for the background, like how some death battles used to, you'll need to get a bit creative. We'll cover a few of the methods on how to do the illusion of perspectives in Flash. A simple way if the floor is barely shown is just rearranging the objects to give some semblance of an active 3D space. Resizing, moving, and rearranging the tiles in a way that it could be a 3D model of a space is key. This is a pretty simple thing to do, and we recommend it if you plan to play with perspectives in this way. Good for simple maps. Pre-rendered floors are available like these ones, which are at an angle. You can find them in a lot of background packs and such. We'd link these, but we're going to teach you how to make your own in a bit, so don't worry about it too much. The real interesting ones are the ones that are animated like these, using the earlier Super Mario Bros. Z examples. They're useful for dynamic running scenes. You can find them in Kaias' second effects pack from the junkyard. To make your own, you just need a flat tile texture. You can grab these off of Google or grab them off of any background pack from MapleStory. We don't need to go over this again, just grab them from chapter 1. Paste them into Flash. Now, if you remember the first part of this chapter, we have a command called copy tile, so let's use that. Alright, and we're done. Now make all this into a movie clip and align it to the center of the stage. This is important. Now go over to the Tools panel and look for this tool, the 3D Rotation tool. If you can't find it, once again, from Chapter 1, click these three dots and see if there are any extra tools here. Now move this line here and wow, we have a tilted floor. You can even mess around with the other lines to get any kind of angle you want. You can even stretch it like what you see on screen. The reason we say align it to the center is because if you use the 3D Rotation tool anywhere else, the angle gets finicky to work with. Finally, right-click and convert to bitmap. Why is this important? That's because when you move your camera, the tile will move over your sprites. Alternatively, to achieve this 3D rotation if you use Flash 8 or think Animate CC's 3D rotation sucks, you can use programs such as Photoshop, Paint.net, or After Effects. We'll just cover Paint.net for this one. You can press Ctrl Shift Z when you have an image open in this window. Either change the parameters or move the ball around until you have a tile that looks good to you, and there you go. You can also do some movements in regard to the 3D rotation tool, like say you want a rapidly tweening street in perspective like what you see on screen. So how do we do that? Well, let's get the street tile and make it into a symbol. Now let's go inside it and take a page on the last part by creating a mass so it's the same size as the tile in the layer above and hiding it for now. Now make a duplicate so it's extended like so, and then make those two bitmaps into one symbol. Simply tween it so it fits inside the constraints of the mask, enable the mask, and boom! Now outside the symbol, use the 3D Rotation tool and adjust the size when necessary to get the angle you want. Next, just right-click the symbol, export PNG sequence, re-import it back into the library, run Quick Align Bitmap, and there you go! You have your 3D animated tile. In animations, one thing we've noticed is that people think adding perspective to the floor is all you need, but it isn't. You'll notice that the background just cuts off and usually in between this cut is an abyss until the background ruins the illusion of perspective. There's a few ways to fix this. One way is by utilizing a vanishing point when possible. A vanishing point is just a point where all the perspective lines converge like so, but this is very situational. Another way is to decorate it in a way. For example, let's make a bridge by adding railings and a base to the floor, masking it with buildings and other objects. You should also add buildings in between this abyss and floor to make this blandness less apparent. 
We'll go more into improving your backgrounds later in the video, so just keep this in the back of your mind. The alternative is to array your tiles by offsetting the scales. If you look at these examples, you'll notice that these are just 2D tiles stacked on top of each other to give the illusion of perspective. The way this works is taking a 2D tile and putting it on a layer above, and then scaling it up. Position it so it covers the base of the 2D floor, closing up the gaps, in a sense. You should also shift the positions horizontally so it doesn't look too similar and the bumps of the ground don't align. Alright, there you go! Also, be sure to parallax. So now that we covered the brief history and methods, let's go more in depth for a second. The biggest piece of advice as the animation team that we can give you for using perspectives is... Don't. Yeah. Don't use perspectives. By that we mean, it's not always necessary to use a perspective if the animation just doesn't need it. 2D isn't just something to settle for. In some scenarios, it just might be better. Some animations suddenly break up the flow of 2D combat for a static 3D standing pose before resuming the action, and it usually serves to detriment the animation instead of benefiting it. Ask yourself this, why am I showing it at this angle? Why is it better than doing it in 2D? And most importantly, can I pull off the map and character animation to do this? Does the map provide necessary assets for you to use 3D effectively? And does your sprite animate well to 3D? Remember, sprites are made for 2D, so can you effectively convey action through a 3D shot? It's possible via rigging and spriting, but we'll cover that next time. But on average, just know that 2D is just as good and some of your favorite animations are 2D. There's a time and place for perspectives. Next thing to cover is the box map trap. This is more common in After Effects, but in general, some people generally make maps very box-like, in order to mask that this isn't real perspectives making the maps feel far more artificial and fake if that makes sense considering that it's not real to begin with. Vary the shape and layout of the area. Another thing we want to cover is filling the map. Too often is a map empty and devoid of content, usually just adding one or two set pieces and calling it a day. Think about it. How many times have you seen an empty large room with just chairs or something? Start adding more objects, things on the floor, furniture, windows, etc. Liven up the place and add some charm and character. Make sure the character sprites can even be animated in 3D if you weren't planning on making any of your own. We mentioned it earlier, the Sonic Advance games have sprites that let Mark pull off some crazy angles in Super Mario Bros. Z. Those sprites are made in perspective for special stages, so it already has a foundation in 3D angles. This will be more difficult for, say, a traditional fighting game, where it's mostly 2D. This goes for attacks too. Make sure you can pull off combat in perspective, should you use a fight scene with those in it. The best way to sell perspectives is... Shadows! In 3D, ambient occlusion and other methods are used to sell the depth and lighting. But with sprites and flash, we need to use shadows. There are a few ways to go about it. You can run new anim clip on your animation, duplicate it on a layer before, lower the brightness, and alpha a bit for the following result. You can also do the drop shadow method with a blurred black circle depending on the light source. Adding these black shadows and adjusting the size can really sell the depth. Here's an example. Here's a simulated staircase. Adding the shadows between each step helps with the depth too. Kaios even did it in his foot collab part, if you look around, how it looks with and without the shadows. As usual, be sure to convert the shadows into bitmaps so your flash doesn't kill itself trying to play the animation in real time. Some last bits of advice. Dally from the map team suggests to Google references for rooms and what you're doing for inspiration, and to also use perspective grids to help out for consistency. You can Google these grids or make them yourself, but Dally linked a PSD file for his perspective grids. For a PSD file, you could just drag them to animate no problem. We also linked another video in the description that goes more into this. Kaya suggests for dynamic animations to do simple things but cam it dynamically. For example, his smash wall part is just his character hitting a wall, being hit, and running back to it. Okay, only one video left to go. The last tutorial. This is going to be on rigging, spriting, and choreography all in one. We don't even plan to start scripting it for a bit because, well, one, it'll be a long one and an ambitious one, so we want to put the utmost effort we can into that video when we have the time for it. And two, we're sort of waiting on something that will make the process a lot easier. The way will be a long one, but it'll also be a worthwhile one. Until then... Oh, I am dreading recording that.